So this is the very famous sunset reaction. As you can see, what I have here is a beaker filled with distilled water with about three grams of sodium thiosulfate, hypo as we like to call it. And I have it sitting on an old style projector. And what I have here is I have it sitting on essentially a little circle that pretty much blocks out the light except for a circle. So I have the circle going through the container and the light is being basically reflected by a mirror to the screen onto a black screen and you can see where I have the sun and the reaction is going to go upper left hand corner you're going to see sodium uh, thiosulfate Na2S2O3 plus the hydrochloric acid I'm going to use about one molar and what it's going to do it's going to make a precipitate well it's going to make pure sulfur it's going to make a couple of things sodium chloride sulfur dioxide water and that S there it's going to make elemental sulfur and that elemental sulfur is insoluble in water so what's going to happen when I add the um, the hydrochloric acid about one molar this is going to start to thicken up as I have elemental silver which is insoluble to water now what I'm doing here the purpose of this very famous demonstration is to illustrate Raleigh scattering or the idea that light that's basically uh, somewhat in the yellow spectrum here is made up of many forms of photons that have individual frequencies now um, the point I want to make here is that this light can be broken up into the many types of light if you would put light through a prism but what I'm gonna do is make it get thicker and as it gets thicker we're gonna see the high energy form of light from this yellow get trapped so to speak it's gonna start scattering and as you probably already learned that when you have light that has higher energy in the violet or blue part of the spectrum it has the ability to scatter more it's higher energies associated with shorter wavelengths so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the reaction and I'm going to hope to capture some of or at least scatter the blue part of the spectrum that's coming out of this um, uh, projector. Now I want you to look at two places. I'm projecting the spot which is our sun and I want you to look here as well and what we're going to see is as we make this thicker like our atmosphere you can see it right now I'm trapping the blue and it's getting thicker and if you look on the screen it's getting redder only the longer wavelengths are able to get through and as it gets thicker you can see that my sunset went from yellow to red and now gone as this got too thick and I ran that reaction pretty fast and now I'm full of elemental silver but in review what happened here was that very quickly as the reaction continued and I made sulfur the reaction rate uh, was pretty fast here but you could see that the blue and the greens were first trapped or scattered more the high energy if you do Roy G Biv the red orange yellow indigo violet spectrum I forgot the green in the middle but the um, the blues and the greens got caught first and you notice we had yellow on the screen and then red so as the sunset happens you see the color change of the Sun because only the longer wavelengths the lower energy wavelengths were able to get through the thick container and therefore cause our sun to go from that yellow to red and eventually gone. Now, a couple different things here. Let's talk about how a sunset actually occurs. Uh, let me put this on the screen here. Um, for those that still don't quite get it, how, how does this relate to the sunset? Well, let's, let's uh, go to a new page here. And let's draw an earth. All right, here's my earth. I'm circled. Okay. Somewhat of a squid there. Uh, now, I'm going to draw my, me standing on top. Okay. And if you don't know me, I have tremendous amounts of hair. Okay. I'm going to draw my sun. Uh, let's make it yellow. Right up here. So during the day, there is very little distance between the sun and my... Oh, there is a large distance, but there's less distance during high noon. So this is the distance the, the rays have to travel. Now, of course, the sun hits the atmosphere, which isn't full of sulfur, like you see over here, but it certainly is filled up with gas molecules. And gas molecules are getting in the way and causing the higher energy forms of light to scatter in all directions. You should have learned that blue, okay, has shorter wavelengths than, let's say, Red. Red has longer wavelengths in electromagnetic spectrum. So the shorter wavelengths have higher energy. For those studying um, these equations, 
energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. And frequency is how many of these wavelengths are current per time. If you have a shorter wavelength, you have a higher frequency. Bottom line is the red, okay, has a lower energy. The higher energy wavelengths of light, because of that higher energy, oops, let's make that blue, scatter in all direction and makes our sky blue. Okay, they call it Raleigh scattering. So the higher energy parts of this light. This raw yellow light is made up of many, many different types of photons of light. Now, let's set this sun. Let's move this sun all the way over uh, to this position here. Okay, so if I make my sun set during this time and put the sun here, okay, now I, I'm still tall, I'm still over here, and um, I'm gonna make the sun kind of move over here so we can see it and move my camera so we're still in the and able to view what I'm doing here. Now, when my sun sets, okay, and I guess I'll do it a little better, you probably could guess that the light has to travel through more of the atmosphere to get to my eyes. So if the sun sets, I'll put my sun over here again. Uh, let's put it like right here so we can see it. So when the sun sets, if you notice the distance to my eye is definitely a lot farther. So therefore the sun has to travel a longer distance. Okay, let's put that in black here. So a longer distance these waves have to travel to my eye than they do when the sun's overhead. So what does that mean? Well, if the sun waves have to travel through more distance and more what? Gas molecules. Guess what? It's as if it has to go through a what? A thicker container like we saw here. So this demonstration showed the container getting thicker with sulfur, making it harder for the light to pass through. Well, as the sun sets, okay, it, the light has to go through a lot more of these molecules. And guess what? Only the what can get through this thickening atmosphere, which is not really thickening, it's just going through more of it. Only the reds and the yellows get to their eyes because they don't scatter as much. They don't have the energy. Whereas the blues, they never get to our eyes because they scattered all outward. And that's why as the sun sets, as the sun travels through more of the atmosphere to get to your eye, okay, only the longer wavelengths get there. All right, so this is a beautiful sunset demonstration. I hope you can understand the implications that the yellow light of the sun is not just yellow photons, it's a mixture of many different forms of light. And the higher energy light scatters more than the lower energy light. And the lower energy light has longer wavelengths, which means they're less frequent. So their frequency is lower, so their energy is lower. Okay, so I hope that makes a lot of sense. And you've learned today about the sunset reaction, a little bit about different energies of light called photons. And I hope that helped.